Then we're going to go on to item number 10, which is public bearing action rezoning for TSRZ-03-21. Request to change to RS-30 to CZ-IND, location 6212 Lake Grant Road, parcel number 138071. Mr. Mayor, um, if you don't mind, I'd like to make one response. I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance. Um, a citizen talked about uh, information related to the fire district and not speaking about the fire district, but if there's any interested citizen, I would highly recommend they go talk to the fire chief and the fire protection experts that are in town that know the challenges of providing fire protection in a little setting like that. So <coughs> don't rely on what you people say, uh, especially when they maybe aren't exactly sure what you're talking about. But there are people that are, willing to, that are willing to answer any questions that are experts in the subject. I recommend they go to the fire chief's office. Thank you, Mayor. Show me the incident reports. All right. We'll continue on with the uh, public uh, with the uh, public hearing. Do you have something for us, Mr. Manager? Uh, yes, sir. So for the next four items, these public hearings, uh, what we would like to do is staff would like to present you each case, uh, and then uh, the, the mayor will open the public hearing hear from citizens uh, related to that case, the applicant gets the uh, chance to address everyone, uh, and then they'll have discussion after the hearing is closed. And so with this first case, um, RZ321, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Brad Vince, our, our planning technician, to present that. And uh, Brad, if you're ready. Sure. Let's back here a bit so we can hear me for short. So this is RZ03-21, as you mentioned. This is a single-family residential R30 that's being applied for conditional zoning in the Metro District. So if Scott will move down the screen for me, um, there is an application here for these exclusions. However, after the applicant met with me personally and after the planning board's review, they agreed to an additional list of exclusions for this property. So I want to point out that this is a conditional zone. However, these conditions here are exclusions, and there's a list in your packet here of items that are not excluded. So it's a little bit different than other conditional zones that we have. So I'll be happy to read all these out if you'd like me to. However, there's a long list, and we have a long night ahead of us, so in the interest of time, I will uh, not read that out. But Scott, if you wouldn't mind going down just a little bit farther to the planning consistency statement. So as part of staff's report, uh, we are asked to address some consistency with our comprehensive plan. So here I address the appropriate limited commercial development. So the proposed use is consistent with other patterns of development located near the intersection of Lake Grant Road and Vincent Lake Giffey. The applicant has a similar business that is adjacent to this property and he hopes to continue the current business at this new site. So Scott, do you mind going down a bit farther? And I can go all the way to the end. I know where you are headed now. Okay. Then. So, Council, if you see the planning consistency statement from the planning board signed by the planning board chair, this is the complete comprehensive list of exclusions on this parcel. After this page, there is a copy of the point of use table, which shows in red stripe through the list of point of uses that are excluded as well. So again, as a reminder, these are the exclusions and what is not permitted on this property. And we did go through this line for line, use by use with the planning board. And after a long discussion, we came to this recommendation. And just to acclimate everybody, do, um, do you need a map? I mean, it's in your packet, but we can go to it to show you exactly where the site is. That's something I probably glossed over a little bit. So this parcel is right next to Center Grove Grill and the Exxon Station, heading out of the east side of Summerfield. It's kind of adjacent from the old Southern States building. Just to the north of this property is the fire station off of Lake Grant Road. Uh, to the east is the Center Grove of the uh, neighborhood. Uh, I mentioned to the south is Center Grove Grill and the Domino's. 
and then to the west is a vacant lot of farmland and the applicants of the property. My understanding, there was a request for a buffer be put in. It was discussed at planning that level, but it was not included in the recommendation. Was not included. Was not. Residential. 
Mr. and Mrs. Helen were living there. And we could look out of the backyard and nothing but trees and wildlife. Occasionally a turkey walked by. But now with the clear cut like it is, uh, I don't want to look at rock piles, uh, tractor trailers, or whatever else, work vehicles. I think it ought to be remain as it is residential. <coughs> Does your lady like to say anything or she agree with you? <laughs> okay, with any further folks would like to speak to this. Come on up here. So there, there will have to be a vegetated 
what we refer to sometimes as a buffer, no one was What the council people are talking about, right? right. And the professionals call it planning arts and well, likewise on the fire department side and on the dominoes and uh, center grill side, there will have to be buffers lesser, lesser width because they're commercial uses. But buffer uh, Planting yards, nonetheless. Being a conditional use, then, could we, we, could we ask the applicant to be interested in increasing that buffer for that demo to help ease the neighbor's concerns? Would that be appropriate? Well, you can ask them, but you can't impose that on them. And, and I might get help with a graphic up here. So this is the lot, and a lot of this. Um, Mr. Bryant, how much would you say of this tree area has been cleared? Is it been cleared all the way to the line? There, there were, yes, we had yeah. lots of old oaks that were dead or dying that we took out. Now there's a handful of trees, but um, definitely more so on the fire station side. There's a couple big ones near the home. And then on the kind of bottom right corner, that little, uh, if you point back up there, I can, yeah, maybe kind of from right in there, and it kind of peeled around and behind the, the uh, gas station. There's larger trees. It might just help to, to what uh, Brad and Bob were describing. So if you look at this line, the rear line, the setback uh, is, is 35, uh, rear setback is 35 feet. But that's really kind of meaningless uh, in this instance because that planting yard they're talking about ranges anywhere from 40 to, to 75 feet. So, so if it's, let's say, 40 feet here and 75 feet here, it has to have an average of 50 through all that area. But there's three numbers there to look at. So I think the planting yard, in this case, on the rear side, which is what seemingly most of the residents have been concerned about out there, is probably the biggest deal. Is that a, does that visual help to know 40 to 75 feet away from this line is what will have to be a planting yard of determined canopy shrubbery, et cetera. Does that make sense? It does. Um, not not being in the planning world and the land from described, if I if I lived in a house like that one, and I looked at my backyard and I see a pile of rocks to a planning yard. So if it was only an average of 40 foot thick. The desire is that we would not. So our ordinance actually specifies how many planting trees, how many understory trees, and how many shrubs per hundred feet should be planted. So the goal of that is that over time we're going to open up to where we want to see the machine. And that's the goal of the plan. It's provided buffer that it's desirable. Now my understanding is all them trees blue cut on the back now. A lot of them have been taken out. But it was, we, we were under, we had several tree companies come out before we did so. And I, I walked around, talked to every neighbor, knocked on the door, and we knew what, who I was, what we were planning on doing. And we had several trees that actually had a tree fall and hit the garage on that property and demolished it. So we had dead trees all throughout there. They're all about the same age. Um, so under their recommendation, we took out quite a few trees that were large and potentially safety. And there was several overhanging the home, right along the property line that could fall towards the home. So we were we were doing we wanted to make one attempt to, to take care of the trees. It was a more economic that way as well. Bob, so I don't wind up at planning its own jail. Tell me how I need to phrase this question about increasing that buffer. Should I, should I say it in a, I sure wish it was that way? Or I think you can ask Mr. Martin, would be willing to uh, increase to a condition that would require a minimum, minimum planting yard of, say, average 60 feet? Or pick a number. Or if you yeah, wanted to do that, you could suggest a footage to be added to all three of those numbers uniformly. So to the minimum, to the average, and to the maximum, let's just say if you wanted 10 extra feet, 
So that's your area. 